Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Spacing Out. I'm Jason McClellan. I'll be joined by Alejandro Rojas later in the show, and he'll tell us about the interesting way in which a UFO encounter is being memorialized in Australia. But first, I'll get you caught up on some of the news stories that have made headlines recently. Researchers from 15 UK research institutions have teamed up to search for extraterrestrial life. Internationally renowned astrobiologist Professor Charles Cockell leads Edinburgh University's UK Center for Astrobiology, or UKCA. According to the Scottish newspaper The Scotsman, the UKCA will spearhead Britain's hunt for aliens, bringing together researchers from 15 institutions across the country. Cockell recently stated that with all the new data available about other planets, it's becoming a lot easier to understand whether conditions on those planets are habitable and if life could exist there. A key instrument at the UKCA is a cutting-edge vacuum chamber capable of simulating atmospheric conditions on alien planets. Additionally, as the Scotsman explains, among the trailblazing technologies deployed will be a laboratory buried more than a kilometer underground in Bowlby Mine, Yorkshire, which will enable study of creatures living deep below the surface of the Earth. Cockell describes that the Bowlby International Subsurface Astrobiology Laboratory, or BISOL, is actually part of a lab that's already there and being used for dark matter research. The mine itself, which is a salt mine, is also still in use and it's very deep. You have things living in the salt, which are unique. In addition to looking for life on other worlds, astrobiologists study life in general, exploring the origins of life and researching the type of environments in which life as we know it can exist. Cockell points out, it's all about better knowledge of extreme environments in outer space based on extreme environments right here on Earth. Salty environments have been found on Mars, and Cockell explains that by studying the life forms existing in the deep salt mines in Yorkshire, scientists can gain insight into the types of life that may currently exist on Mars. The BBC reports that the UKCA officially launched on Tuesday, April 16th, but the UKCA has been active since 2012. In early 2013, the UKCA offered an introductory astrobiology course through the online course provider Coursera. The course reportedly attracted 40,000 students from around the world. In addition to the partnership with various research institutions, the UKCA is affiliated with NASA's Astrobiology Institute. Singer Robbie Williams and Michael Buble teamed up to sing a duet on Williams' next album, and the song is about Williams' favorite topic, UFOs. In a recent interview, Buble confirmed that he sang on a UFO song for Williams' upcoming Swing album. Williams' first Swing album, Swing When You're Winning, was reportedly the artist's biggest selling solo album to date, so he's hoping to repeat on that success with another Swing album. Regarding the collaboration, The Sun recently stated, the likely lads have bonded over their similar lives. Speaking about Williams, Buble recently stated, I don't think there's anyone in my life at this point who I could relate to the way I could with Robbie. He explained, we're around the same age, We've gone through a lot of the same things. He's just become a dad. I'm just about to. We both have problems. We both probably go too far with things we do. He just talks about it more than I do. Speaking about the UFO track, Buble described, it's catchy and fun, Neo Swing. One of the lyrics is, soda pop, Yoda what? Robbie wrote it when looking at UFOs. Aside from this new song, Williams has been extremely vocal about his strong interest in UFOs. In fact, in 2012, Business Standard reported that Williams bought an island off the coast of California so he could spot UFOs in private. And perhaps spotting UFOs from his private island is what inspired his new UFO tune. Well, a new book claims that Vatican astronomers are looking for extraterrestrials. And they're using Lucifer to do it. Now, although it shares the same name as Christianity's fallen angel and the personification of evil, Lucifer is actually an instrument attached to a telescope. As popular science explains, Lucifer is an acronym for the instrument's extremely lengthy title, Large Binocular Telescope Near Infrared Utility with Camera and Integral Field Unit for Extragalactic Research. This instrument is attached to the University of Arizona's Large Binocular Telescope, or LBT, located on Mount Graham in southeastern Arizona. The Vatican-owned Vatican Advanced Technology Telescope, or VAT, is right next door. Authors of a new book assert that Vatican astronomers are using both the VAT and the LBT's Lucifer instrument to watch for an alien savior. Tom Horn and Chris Putnam, authors of Exo Vaticana, Petrus Romanus, Project Lucifer, and the Vatican's astonishing plan for the arrival of an alien savior, visited with Jesuit astronomers at the VAT, including Guy Consolmago. The author claims that Consolmago revealed to them documents showing that the Vatican believes that we are soon to be visited by an alien savior from another world. 
The authors claim they back up their assertions with documented sources in their book that was just released on April 15th. Guy Consolmango speaks regularly about science and religion. In a 2010 interview, he told The Guardian any entity, no matter how many tentacles it has, has a soul. He made headlines because of this interview, in which he said he would offer to baptize an extraterrestrial being if one requested. Consolmango has also stated that the Pope and the Vatican are keen on science, and they are kept up to date on the latest scientific developments by the Pontifical Academy of Sciences. On Tuesday, April 9th, HuffPost Live featured a segment titled Searching for ET. HuffPost Live's Jacob Soberoff moderated this discussion that featured SETI Institute senior astronomer Seth Shostak, MUFON journal editor Roger Marsh, and Huffington Post journalist Lee Spiegel. The panel discussed SETI's efforts to detect intelligent extraterrestrials by listening for radio signals in space. The group also touched on other astrobiology efforts, such as NASA's planet-hunting Kepler Space Telescope and its search for habitable worlds. But Roger Marsh pointed out that there are a lot of people studying ufology today that think that the intelligence is already right here on this planet. Speaking about the SETI Institute's efforts, Marsh stated, they're looking out into space to see what they can find. I think that's great research. I think there's a lot of different things we should be studying. But my organization hasn't left the planet. We're right here on the surface looking at the evidence that's right here. When discussing UFO sightings, Lee Spiegel was careful to point out that many people jumped to the conclusion that UFOs are extraterrestrial spacecraft. He explained, the word UFO doesn't mean alien. Marsh also commented, we don't know if they're aliens. He discussed the 600 plus sightings of unidentified objects reported to move on every month. He stated that of those hundreds of monthly sightings, only about five or 10 of those are really, really good reports. Well, now let's go to Alejandro Rojas and hear about the interesting way a UFO encounter is being memorialized in Australia. Alejandro? Thanks, Jason. Today, I'm talking about a park in Australia. It's commem commemorating one of the largest UFO sightings ever in Australia. It's called Westall 66 because it took place in 1966, and there were a lot of students from Westall High School that witnessed this whole event. There were actually 90 witnesses overall, and what they saw was a large silver object that was saucer-shaped. It touched down in the nearby woods, then lifted up and took off at a really quick speed. So uh, even now, the witnesses are baffled as to what this object could have been. So the place that this took place is called Clayton South. It's a suburb of Melbourne, and they've decided to commemorate the event with a playground. So they're spending $150,000 to build a large silver UFO that has some netting and a slide and some LEDs, so everything you can want at a playground. And they're gonna have a plaque that is uh, just telling people about what happened back in 1966. So a lot of the witnesses that were there back then and still live in the area, and they're very happy that uh, what took place is being taken serious because of course, People have made fun of them over the years and they've felt self-conscious about it, but it's something that they still take very seriously. So you can go to openminds.tv and see a picture of the plans for the park and read more about it. Back to you, Jason. All right. Thanks so much for that, Alejandro. Well, that is all for this episode of Spacing Out. Until next week's episode, openminds.tv is where you can go for all the latest UFO news. OpenMinds.tv is also where you can go to listen to Open Minds UFO Radio or watch other Open Minds produced video content. And if you're watching the video version of the show, as always, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done that. Leave your comments below the video. And if you like the episode, click on the like button. Thanks again for joining me today. And my co-host Maureen will be back next week. I know you Maureen fans are happy to hear that. Well, until then, I'm Jason McClellan, and I'll see you in the future.